Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of our Asana training videos. In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between tasks and subtasks in Asana. And I've decided to make this video because this is a question we get quite a lot from clients that we're working with. And there are both some practical reasons or best practices in terms of when to use a task versus a subtask. And there are also some technical reasons and some limitations of using tasks versus subtasks. So that's what I'm going to be explaining in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing Asana for your business, or maybe you need some training for your team so they use Asana in the best way, if so, click the link in the description below to learn more about our Asana support and consulting options. You can also request a quote from us if you'd like to get the best price on your Asana subscription. So let's get into this video, tasks versus subtasks in Asana. Now, the way I like to think of a task in Asana is as a unit of work. What is something that you need to get done? And then your subtasks are, what are the smaller steps that you need to complete to accomplish or to complete that main parent task? So think of subtasks as a checklist. If you were writing down the process almost as like an instruction manual, do this step, then this one, then this one, that's what your subtasks are. The smaller steps you need to take to achieve the main task. Here's an example from our main Asana account. I'm in this content project here. This is where we plan videos, blog posts, and content that we're producing. And each piece of content is represented as a task. So this video you're watching right now, Asana tasks versus subtasks, I've set up as a task right here. It's due this Friday because that's when I'm planning to publish and release this video. And the task is assigned to me, Paul. I'm the main person responsible for completing this task. But Creating a video like this involves a few different steps. And I also want to make sure we don't miss an important step. So down here, we have subtasks. And the subtasks represent both the steps and the order in which we need to do things. So before I can do anything else here, I need to record and edit the video and upload to YouTube. And you can see that subtask is actually assigned to me. That's what I'm working on today. And then once I complete my subtask, I will assign some of these subtasks to members of my team. So Judy on my team, she will create the YouTube thumbnails, add the video cards, the description, and so on. So the subtasks serve two purposes here. Firstly, they're helping to break down this main task, producing the video into smaller steps that we need to complete. And also this allows me to involve multiple people in the process. So if I go back to a video that I made last week, this is one that's already done. You can see Judy has these tasks assigned to her. I've got John working on this particular task or subtask rather here. And so this is a great way to think about using subtasks, especially if you need to involve multiple people. And the way I like to think about whose responsibility everything is, is I'm the assignee of the parent task. This larger piece of work, this piece of content that I'm working on, ultimately I'm responsible for getting this done because I'm the assignee of the parent task. Uh, I do need input or help from other people on my team. They are working on this through their subtasks. But if I need to chase them, it's my responsibility to chase them up and to make sure they get their part done on time so that I can complete the main parent task on time. Now, if I go back to the task or the video that I'm working on today, which is this one here, you might be wondering, why have I not assigned these subtasks yet? If I'm going to get other people to do them, should I not, not put their name on, on these tasks? Now, I could do that. The reason in my case that I haven't for this, for this particular project is I'm not ready for them to work on their subtasks yet. I need to complete the video first. I need to record, edit, and upload. And then later today, once I'm done, I will mark this as complete. And that's when I will bulk assign these ones. So if I hold the shift key on my keyboard, I can select that task there. Still holding shift, I can then select this task here. So I've selected those five tasks. And then I could click in the assignee field and assign these to Judy. And these will be due tomorrow. Now, I like to do it that way so that when I finish my subtask, I assign Judy subtasks because she then knows, great, she can get to work on those straight away. I could also make the argument that I should assign these subtasks ahead of time, even though it's not 
the right time for Judy to work on hers yet, it might be useful for her to see that she has these subtasks coming up so that she can plan ahead and plan her day accordingly. That's a very valid argument. And so if you want to assign subtasks ahead of time, that's completely appropriate. I just, in my situation, I like to do things a little bit differently. If you are gonna do it the other way, this is where you could also create dependencies between your subtasks. So if I go to my task here, let's actually reopen that. Let's pretend this one is not done yet. And I'm just gonna copy the task link to this task. And then what I could do is in this one that Judy's working on, I could make it dependent on my task. So here I've said, Judy's task, create the YouTube thumbnail, is blocked by recording and editing the video. So if I did that, I could go through and create dependencies with all the subtasks. Judy could have her task, her subtask, sorry, ahead of time, but she would see, okay, I can't work on it yet because Paul needs to record, edit, and upload. That's another perfectly valid way of doing it. And then when I complete my subtask, Judy would receive a notification in her inbox that says, Paul has completed his task, you can now get to work on yours. So there's just a little bit of personal preference there. There's no right or wrong way. I just prefer to assign the subtasks when they're ready to be worked on. Now, I actually asked the other Asana experts on my team, how do you guys like to use subtasks? And Andrew said something really similar to me where he likes to have the parent task be the main body of work and then subtasks are used to break down the work into smaller steps. He also made the very good point that this is really useful, especially in a project where you don't want the project to be too cluttered. So here's an example from our demo account where we have this big project we're working on and lots of these tasks have subtasks. So if I expand all these for a sec, just to give you a sense of the volume of work and all the little steps we need to do in this project, it, gets, it, it makes the size of the project a lot bigger. So by using subtasks and collapsing them like that, we can keep the project a little bit sort of more minimal, a bit more organized. And this is great because not everyone working in the project needs to see all those micro, um, uh, micro tasks and small amount of detail. Really just the person assigned to this task, they're the one that needs to see the smaller steps or the little checklist here. So using subtasks is a great way to keep the main project a lot cleaner and more organized. Lindsay made the really good point here that sometimes uh, subtasks are great, even just for yourself, even if you're not gonna involve multiple people, again, just sort of using them as a bit of a checklist. So you might have a task like this where you're designing an Instagram post and you just want a simple checklist for yourself of the different dimensions that you need to produce and the steps to follow. And in this case, this is an example where if this is assigned to me, I probably wouldn't assign these individual subtasks. If I do, watch what happens. So those are all now due, uh, those are all assigned to me. You can see on my My Tasks page now, I can see the main parent task, but I can see all of the individual subtasks as well. And that's sort of adding unnecessary noise to my parent tasks, or to, sorry, to my My Tasks. So, this is an example where often I will leave subtasks unassigned like that. There we go. So that when I go to my tasks, I can just see the main parent task. But when I click on it, I'll see my checklist there ready to go. And I can check these off when I know that I've, I've completed those steps. And finally, Kayla made the really good point here that sometimes it doesn't make sense to create an entire project for the work that you're doing, in which case, a task may represent sort of like a mini project, for example, a client that you're working with, and then the subtasks would represent the checklist or the steps you need to complete to, to work with that client. For example, if I go back to our demo account, here's the Amazon project that I showed you before, and sometimes you do want to use an entire project to plan out everything you're doing, especially if there's a large volume of work to get done. You can see here I've organized my project with sections, tasks, and subtasks. But if I have a smaller engagement or a client where we're not doing that much work with, maybe I don't need to set up an entire project. In that case, what I could do is have a project called clients where I use a task to represent the client instead of an entire project. So here we've got Joe Smith. And again, I've just used subtasks to break down the, um, the kind of mini project, let's call it, into smaller steps. Now, let me finish by showing you a couple of little tips that you can use with your subtasks. 
Firstly, you can create sections within your subtasks, a bit like you can create sections or these headings here in the main project. So if I start a new task, and then, uh, sorry, subtask rather, and use the shortcut tab N, I can create a section here, let's call it uh, phase one, and let's maybe put that at the top, and then I'll maybe create another section here, tab N, phase two. So I can actually create sections to organize and break up my um, subtasks into different kind of phases or stages, or just to create a bit more structure between them. So that's really handy. If I right click on a subtask, I can mark the subtask as either just a regular task, which is what it is right now. I could also make it a milestone. Milestones typically represent the major milestones or deadlines or just big kind of like things that are being completed. That's a big win for the project. That's big progress being made. So those milestones there. Or I could mark this as an approval. And this changes the way I can complete a subtask. Rather than just completing it, I can say that this subtask is approved, I might request changes, or reject the subtask. So those are a couple of little ways that we can add extra functionality to our subtasks. Now one uh, criticism, let's say, that we hear about subtasks is actually to do with the Asana mobile app. If you have a subtask assigned to yourself, when you look at it on your phone, you only see the name of the subtask and you actually have to click into the subtask to see the name of the parent task. And it's this extra click that sometimes people find annoying or inconvenient because they just want to quickly see which parent task is this subtask about. And so we've actually had some people say we don't use subtasks for this reason. While I understand the point of view, it's an extra click to go and see it. In my mind, the benefits of using subtasks, the better organization that you have to structure all your work and having checklists far exceed this slight annoyance of having to click in. So in my opinion, I do encourage you to use subtasks despite this little, this little thing there. I think it's just the fact that the mobile app, there's not a lot of screen space to show the, the parent task name in there. But I hope this video has been useful. If you're still not sure about when to use tasks versus subtasks, leave me a comment below. One more time, if you would like help with setting up or optimizing Asana, or if you need help with your Asana licensing, feel free to contact us. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.